Dirt Bike Tire Change Pro Tips with the Elevate Action Sports. All right, Jay here with Dirt Bike TV and Elevate. Today we're gonna show you how to change your dirt bike tire. One of my favorite things to do, check it out. So we remove our sprocket bolt, spacer, washer. And at this point, I like to leave, since I'm working right here next to it, I just put my spacers right next to the, to the bike. And I'm gonna pop it right onto my, my tire stand. And I like to grease the axle first thing. We already have this out, and so it's already good to go. So make sure you clean off the axle, have it ready to go. I like to have it ready to go before I even start on changing my tire. One of the things that freaks people out is I have the sprocket side up. It's okay, don't worry. We're gonna flip it over when it gets to the tough stuff here. So we take, first what I like to do is remove all the air from the tire. So we took off, on the Hondas they have a little rubber cap, so I took that off. And I have a little cool valve stem core remover tool. And we take the whole core out completely. And then I'm gonna loosen the rim lock just like this. And on the rim lock, I'm gonna back it off to where it's just barely on, just like right there. And then I'm gonna start with my spoons, like most probably these spoons that are in this shape right here as a spoon, and we use both sides of it. So if you watch, I'll try to mention when I have it backwards. So I'm gonna knock it off just like that. And I'm knocking the tire off the bead right now. And I'll come over here to the rim lock and push that on the tires all the way off the bead. Now I'm gonna flip it over. Okay. Also, if you need a tire stand like this, we have the drawings to build one your own. You can email us. You can go to my website or contact info anywhere on our uh, social or my site and you can email us and we'll get you the drawings for it. Okay. So here we're gonna knock it off again. And this is a 19 inch wheel, motocross wheel. And 18 inch is a little bit easier. We mainly run tubes. So the rim locks right here, I'm gonna start just a little ways away from there, about a fourth or so. And I'm gonna put my tire spoon in. When I put it in, I'm putting this end down like this. And I'm going right across from me. And I can feel it hook in. And then I pull. You don't wanna go past that point at all. Now I can feel it's getting real tight. It's come up on the bead here. I'm gonna knock it off right here a little bit. It'll make it easier to make this next grab right here. Okay, see so at this point, I'm almost ready to get rid of that spoon. Now I can get rid of these two. I just have the one uh, spoon here. And I can just work my round. Now, and now my left hand is pushing down like this as I'm taking these bites about two or three inches apart. And I'm using my body against the tire, just like this. And I've got the tire all the way off of one side. Now, some guys would remove the tube right there. We don't go through that step and hassle. Again, I'm gonna start about a fourth of the way away from the rim lock. And start pulling up on the tire. And I'm just gonna keep moving it like this. Now I'm kind of taking a little bit larger bites and I push my body against the tire. And you see we're all the way out like so. And I'm gonna push like this. Then I'm gonna flip it over. And at this point, I like to inspect the rim here to, to ensure that the, the tape or the band, whatever you have is good. And this one's still good. Rim locks under the band, that's important. On, on this one, the KTMs, they have tape and it stays above it. Uh, and so this stays in this hole. The, the rim lock does. On the Hondas, they have a large hole for the uh, rim lock right here, I mean, for, for the valve stem, and you wanna make sure that, that we use that same hole. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove the tube from the tire, and we're gonna have, um, we have to use some baby powder in the new tire, which is actually, I got a good used tire I'm putting on here. The new MX-14 here. I'm gonna spin this around like this. And I got that powder worked in there real good all the way around. 
I'm going to throw my tube in. Smells good, huh? We're ready to go. A little dirt and baby powder mixed. Okay, so now we're going to put the core back in the valve stem. Get the our tool, a little install tool, those little teeth. It'll grab in there. And this little tool is simple to get from a auto parts store or, or online. I got it good and snug again. And now I'm just gonna barely touch the air. So about like that. It doesn't register on the gauge how much air is in there. So it's just keeping the tube all firm right there. Just nice and that, that amount right there. Now at this point, I like to have a, a nut here. I'm gonna have that nut and we're gonna now put tire paste on here. We use a, uh, this Pro Buds or, or any industrial type of tire paste. Now this tire has a little bit of old junk on here, some old dirt. I'm gonna wipe it off a little bit. So you can see that I'm not above using a good used tire as well. I was gonna wipe some of that dirt off and I'll put our tire paste back on now. Okay, now, what's wrong with this right here? So our, our sprocket's going this way, this tire's going like this. So it is a directional tire. This is pretty obvious, this one's a directional tire. So I'm gonna flip it around the right direction, and now I see my sprocket, I know the wheel's spinning this way. This thing's gonna throw up a big roost this way. So we're in good position here now. Now I'm gonna put the valve stem in the hole like this, holding it with my thumb, and I get the, the nut on here just like this. And, and then I can push the, the tube on like so, the tire. And I push the tire on and I'm about, I don't know, 60, 70% on. And then I'm gonna grab my tire sp spoon here and pop it on. And I'm using my left hand to go underneath. Just like so. And that's keeping me from scratching the rim or anything and being able to get in there good. Now I flip the tire back over. Our tube is uh, good here, our, our rim lock is stuck right here. So this is a simple step. This saves you having to take your rim lock out. So you kind of walk it like this and then push the rim lock and it pops in. And then also over here, my tube is under the tire a little bit and I'll just push it like that. And now it's, the tube is inside the tire. We're in good shape over here. So now we're gonna flip it back over. Now at this point, I like to go to the rim lock right here. Make sure that's moving good. And I'm gonna get in here and make sure that the tube is on top of the rim lock. And now I'm gonna start my install just right next to the valve stem about that far away. And I'm gonna put my bead buddy in right here. This is a great tool to have to help you do the job right. And I'm hands pushing down, just like so. I'm holding the rim lock with my finger as I go around. Now some rims are a little different when the rim lock is right next to the to the valve stem, but this one's the kind of the harder of the two to do the way I just did it. So it's, this will hopefully help you out. Now we're gonna put my leg underneath this kind of holding up the tire and my foot's on my stand. Now this last little bit, I can just push on, go like this and pull this out. Now the first thing we wanna do is air it up and make sure that it beads up. So now I like to wipe off all of our tire paste. And as I'm doing so, I'm making sure that we're beaded up all the way around. Okay, so that looks good there. Now let's check the other side. Okay, just like so. So now we're gonna tighten up the rim lock, first thing. Now there's not a torque spec for this. You just don't wanna over tighten it you can actually break the rim lock. So you want it just good and snug. It's right there, that's how I call it, that, that tight. Right there. Good, snug, we're, we're good. We're in good position. Now we're gonna back this nut all the way off because on this Honda, on a regular bike, we'd leave the nut on and have it touch the cap. But in this case, the Honda has this rubber piece which allows the, the, the valve stem, to, the valve to move around. And so now we're gonna set pressure. So 
So uh, tire pressures can range, you know, 11 and a half, probably in the lowest up to 15. We typically are in the 12, five to 13 range, typically for most of our stuff. On trail riding, we can, on our gummy tires or trials tires, we'll be down to eight, nine. But for this bike, like at our tracks, we 12, eight, 12, five to 12, eight range. Good traction and hookup. Okay, so we got our tire pressure set there. Now we're gonna throw our cap on. And now we're gonna throw our wheel back on the bike. Okay, so I got my wheel in here. I sit on the ground, I'm not too proud. And one of the reasons I do that is you have a lot better control. I've seen a lot of guys struggle putting rear wheels on and have to spread the brake pads apart. We typically don't have to spread the brake pads apart. If I get my thumb over here while I'm installing, I can work it into the brake pads like that. And then the first thing you do is put the, the chain on. Don't put, the, don't put the, your, your axle in yet. You get the chain on there, so then if you were to fall, if you stop, you have to go get your axle, it's not gonna go anywhere. So then at this point, I got my foot that's moving this around really nicely, and I can line it up just right and work my way through. You don't wanna be hammering this thing. If you have to hammer it, something's wrong. So no hammers. I'm sure you guys have all seen bikes that everything's all beat. Uh, just like that with my hand, with the glove on, and it's good. When you're putting your chain blocks on, you can see the mark from the old way the chain adjuster was. You can see that these were in the inside. So you can, you can kind of know where to do so you don't put them on backwards and get, get all out of shape on that go. So now I got my, not watch them push my wheel forward and I can tighten up my wheel. So I put a rag in our chain and sprocket here to pull the wheel up. You don't gotta go crazy, you just get it snug in there. That's gonna pull it up against the, against the stops. And I can tighten up my wheel. Okay, good and snug. You can double check your torque spec on that with your owner's manual. Okay, so that's a wrap on tire change. Uh, I know I go a little bit fast at it. I've done a lot and I do a lot every, uh, every week every month, every year, I do a lot of tires. So I have a good process down. What I suggest is watching it through a time or two and then watching it and pausing it as you go if you're trying to do it. Hopefully that helps you out. If you're looking for anything dirt bike related, parts, gear, anything like that, head over to our website or the link in the description below and click on the Rocky Mountain link. From there, you'll be able to see all of our top picks and much more. It's a great place to find all the dirt bike parts that you need.